For lesson eight, we'll be talking about how to find the percent. So in all of these questions, we'll be given information, usually the part and the whole, so that we can find the percent. So for our first example, the sixth grade class held an end of year talent show. Of the 300 sixth graders, 246 decided to attend. What percent of the sixth grade class attended the talent show? So let's first look and see what we know. We know that we have 300 sixth graders and we know that 246 of them attended the talent show. So looking at these two things and knowing that we are dealing with problems where we don't know the percent, we have to decide which one of these is the part and which one is the whole. Since it's 300 sixth graders and some of them, 246 of them, attended the show, I know that the 300 is the total, so it's the whole, and the part, the ones that decided to attend, is the 246. And then over here, what do we need to know? Just like the title of the lesson, we're looking for the percent, and specifically the percent that attended. So actually, this next question is not even relevant because what we're looking for is the percent, not the part, not the whole. All right, now we can try this with a strip diagram. So remember, when you do your strip diagram, you want the percentages to go from 0 to 100. And then you match up your whole value with the 100%, because those are both the totals. And then the 246, the part, you would try to break this down and fill it in where it would go. So if this is about halfway, maybe somewhere like here. So when I look at this strip diagram, it's not obvious to me how I'm going to get this 246. And in a case like this where the numbers aren't very nice, I would actually not use this diagram, and I would decide instead to use a proportion. But we can answer our final question here. Would our solution answer the question? And we know that it would because it's a percent, and our question is asking for a percent. So yes, it would give us the percent who attended. But again, we're not going to solve it because I don't think this is the best method to do it. And we were just practicing to look at a strip diagram with the percent as the missing information. For numbers one and two, this method is really not the easiest way to find the answer. So we're actually going to move on and look at a way that's less about visualizing or seeing it and more about solving and getting an answer, which is our proportion. So in our proportion, we have percent over 100 equals part over whole. Same as last time, except in this case, what we're missing is this percent. So number three, a farmer decides to sell 16 pounds of his small 48 pound potato crop. What percent of the crop did he sell? So again, we don't know the percent. We know the part and we know the whole. So he's going to sell 16 pounds of it, but he had 48. So I'm going to say the part is the 16 pounds that he sells and the 48 is the total that he used to have. So to set up our proportion now, we have all three parts. So something out of 100 equals 16 out of 48. Lots of ways to solve this one, but if you're not sure what to do, the first thing you can do is try to simplify the fraction that has both numbers in it. And I happen to remember that 16 goes into 48 because 16 times 3 is 48. So I know that this is actually going to be 1 over 3 if we were to divide and simplify by 16. So now we have something over 100 equals 1 third. And I remember this one because I know that 1 third is one of those special fractions that we're supposed to memorize. But if you're not sure, you can always use the long division method. 
and you get 33.3 repeating. So I'm going to write that. that that's how we're going to get between here, 33.3 repeating. And if we want to go the other way, we can multiply by the 33.3 repeating to get our answer. So rounding this, our final answer is just 33%. And if you knew your one third was 33%, you didn't have to show any of that work. Okay, next up. For every $10 Glenn earns, his parents require him to save $2. What percent of his money does he get to spend? So he's going to earn $10, save $2, and we're talking about how much he spends. So if he earned 10 saved 2 then he would have spent the rest, which is 8 So when we do this, we want to talk about how much he spent. So let's use the 8 not the 2 so that we can find our percent. So in this case, again, we need the part, the whole, and the percent. We know the percent is the thing that we're looking for. The part that he spends, and then the total that he earns would be the whole. So we could say something over 100 equals 8 out of 10. 8 is the part, 10 is the whole. And I can see pretty quickly that what I want to do is times 10 times 10, and then I would get 80, or 80%. For number five, Coach Thomas has a player who made nine free throw shots out of 15 in tryouts. To make the team, a player must be able to shoot 65% of the free throws. Will this player make the team? So notice here that they seem to give us three numbers, but you have to double check something about this percent. It's not saying that this player made 65% of the shots. It's saying that we have to compare whatever percent this player made to that 65% to see if they made the team. So we don't actually know our percent, but we know that we want to compare it to 65. We do know our part and our whole because we have 9 out of 15. 9 out of 15 would mean that the top number is 9 and the bottom number is 15. So the part is 9, the whole is 15. So 9 out of 15 equals something out of 100. We don't know the percent. And looking at this one, I can't make a 15 into a 100, but I can simplify that first fraction. So I'm going to try simplifying by 3s. If we do that, we'll get... 3 over 5 equals something over 100. And we know that we can make a 5 into a 100 by using the number 20. And then we do 3 times 20. That's going to give us 60. So this person made 60%, 60 percent, 60 out of 100 shots. Did they make the team? Well, if we go back and look, it said 65% was the cut and they did not make 65%, so we're going to have to say no, that they did not make the team because it was only 60%. Number six, a kindergarten class has nine girls and 11 boys. What percent of the class are girls? So right away, we're missing the percent, and it asks specifically about girls. So I'm going to say that the part that we care about is the girls, so number 9 as the part. And now the whole value is what percent of the class, not compared to the boys, but of the class. So what we're going to need to do is 9 plus 11 equals 20 to get the total for the class. So go ahead and write your part over your whole equals your percent over 100. We don't know the percent, but we do know how to get from 20 to 100 times 5. Do the same thing on the top, and you're going to get 45 out of 100. So 45% of the class 
is girls. And there you have number six. For number seven, Joey has eight pairs of socks in his drawer. Five of them are white. What percent of colored socks does Joey have? So right away, I hear what percent. And we want to know what percent are in color. But if we look at our question, it's giving us that he has eight pairs in the drawer. So eight total pairs of socks, which would be the whole value, eight. But then the part says five of them are white. But it asks us about which ones are colored. So we should assume that if you take the eight total and take away the five white ones, you're going to get three pairs that are different colors. So I'm going to say the part is actually three in this case. If you use five, you would be getting the percent that are white. So you have to be very careful and make sure that you're labeling correctly and your labels are matching. So part over whole equals percent over 100. And on this one, I don't see any way to simplify, so we're just going to have to go with our division method. And there you can see that when you divide 100 by 8, you get 12.5. So that's telling me that to get between these, it's times 12.5. So then we're just going to need to know what is 3 times 12.5. And you can show that out. 37.5 or 37.5%. Colored socks. And last up, number eight. It rained seven days during the month of April. About what percent of the month did it rain? So right away, we don't know the percent. We just know that it rained seven days out of the month of April. So seven days out of the whole month. So seven is the part. It's the part that rained. And the whole is however many days are in April. It's either 30 or 31. And if you look it up, you're going to see that it's 30 days. So we know our part. We know our whole. And we know that we're looking for the percent out of 100. So we know that we can do 100 divided by 30. So if you do that out, you get 3.3 .3 repeating. So 30 times 3.3 .3 repeating, 7 times 3.3 .3 repeating is going to give us our percent. So because it's saying about what percent, I'm just going to round 3.3 .3 times 7. And if you do that, you're going to get 23.1 or about 23% of the month. And that's it for Lesson 8.